Hi, it's me, Gatsby. Um, <laughs> sorry, this video is unscripted, so I'm, it's gonna be incredibly awkward. So yeah, you saw the, the thumbnail probably or the title. I decided it'd be kind of fun to go through a lot of my like old art. Um, sadly, a lot of my stuff from when I was like in middle school, a lot of that's been lost to time because I, I, I burned it because I thought that's what you were supposed to do with your, your art that you stopped liking was you're supposed to burn it. I know better now, um, but not all of this. I So I, I tried to find what I could. Some of this is like elementary age, so like nine, 10. Um, I did find some stuff from when I was like 12, but a good chunk of this is like 14, 15. And I try to have this set up in kind of like chronological order, a youngest to oldest, but you will see it's kind of complicated because I have this very, or at least I did, uh, it was a very toxic trait where I would find like my old art and then I would like redraw it on the same paper. Um, so it, it just kind of makes things a little, or at least for me, I think it, it's a little hard to like properly date things. Cause it's like, I'll have something from when I was 12 and then on the same paper, it'll be like, oh, I redrew it when I was 14. I redrew it when I was 16. I redrew it when I was 17. Literally, like, one of these papers, you'll, you'll see that. It's a very specific example. Um, so, yeah, hopefully that all makes sense. So let's get into this monstrosity. Starting off here is stuff I drew when I was nine, partially. Um, see, I, I got this Beatles... <laughs> Yellow submarine, Beatles notebook, whatever, when I was nine. Um, and I drew on some of the pages. And then later when I was like 15, I found it again and I started using it again. So I just want to go through the first couple of pages showing the stuff from, I, from when I was nine before setting it to the side and maybe come coming back to it later. I don't know. I just definitely want to show some of this early stuff because it, it provides context for what I do later on in life. So first of all is when I was younger, all I would really draw, and I still kind of do, I still have this thing. Is I really like drawing uh, girls, women, you know, ladies, but I also really liked drawing like creatures, like these really messed up cats. There's like this lizard dog thing Sadly, there's not a lot that I have, but I, I really remember drawing a lot of lizard dog things is what I, what I would call them. Have some more. But here we have stuff I probably drew when I was 15. It was drawn, ironically, as a joke. As you can see, it's if I think I was trying to like parody or satire like anime stuff. This is very clearly like supposed to be something about like yaoi hands. You see, back in my day, yaoi hands, yaoi was something to make fun of. Now everything's yaoi, which is cool. You know, yaoi right. Oh, it's stupid. It's going to be a lot of stupid bits. So, like I said, this is unscripted, very awkward. So, yeah, there's that. On this next page, once again, just an example of something I drew when I was nine. This is, I think I was just trying out like an erasable pen. It's like my first time ever having one. And I, this is from when I was probably like 15, 14, um, that I redrew kind of like, oh, see how much better I've, ugh. As you can see, I have always had a very kind of messy style. Very crazy. Now this next page is very important because there is, as you can see, a little kitty cat, but there is a cat girl. And this is very important. And this sounds really, <laughs> this is really stupid. But when I was like nine or 10, I went to a Michael's uh, craft store, whatever, with my mother. And I always liked going to like looking at their like how to draw art book section. And I saw for the very first time the how to draw furries. And, you know, as a kid, I didn't know what furries were. I just knew that I really liked the art, how it was rendered. Like the, I just thought it was the coolest thing ever. 
So I like kept looking at it, kept skimming through it. You know, we didn't, my mom did not buy it for me that day at the store, but later on, I believe she ordered a copy for me online. And I looked at thing, that thing like religiously because I really wanted to be able to draw like on that level. I don't know, I just, something very like enamored. And it's funny cause like, it's definitely kind of like the start where there's like a lot of things I do. I feel like people would say, oh, you're such a furry, even though I myself don't really consider myself a furry. But one thing I do remember is that book, that at least that first one, because they made a second one too, if I remember, but that first book was section like the different types of like anthro furry characters you could do. So the first section was cats or feline, whatever. And I had it in my brain that I had to master each one before I could go on to the next. So I would focus on the cat section because I thought I had to get good at drawing the cats before I could move on to like the other sections. So I just got obsessed with drawing like cat girls because I, I only liked drawing girls because that's what I was more comfortable with when I was younger. And then that just kind of morphed into cat girls. So and even now to this day, I find myself just like, I've kind of branched out sometimes. I'll draw like rabbit women, but it's still very much like women with furries, furry women. I don't know. It's, it's really ridiculous. We have some portrait of a woman. I think this is like crayon. Um, so the way like the, the wax here, like I think it had like some other colors on it. Here we have some other stuff funny bird thing, some other figures. Now this is the last page I want to do for this because after this it's going to be stuff from when I was 15. Um, but that's another cat girl and this is actually, despite it looking very cat-like, uh, I believe this is My Little Pony. Um, around this time, because um, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic came out when I was 10 years old. And I was very enamored with Friendship is Magic for many years. <laughs> but there was a good solid year, a couple years there for like probably like 10 to 12 that I would draw a lot of pony stuff. Um, sadly, a lot of that pony stuff is what got burned, which makes me very sad. So we're gonna put this to the side for now. I'm not sure if I'll get back to this or not. It depends how much longer I take with this other stuff. Who knows? Um, so here we have this, a bunch of loose paper. So the thing to know about me is that, yes, sometimes I get like these notebooks and stuff, but especially as a kid, you know, you give me a piece of paper, I'm gonna draw on it. You know, I would draw on school papers. I would draw instead of taking notes. I had ADHD, I, I had, I still have ADHD. So I would just, I would just draw a lot. Um, I think just because it was something to do with my hands and it's something I almost kind of fixated on, if that makes sense. But here we have kind of that specific example I had earlier. So this is something I drew when I was 12. This is a character of mine. I haven't really drawn her in forever, but she went through a lot of names right now in my head. Uh, this character is, is Mo, M-O. But when I was younger, it was like, it was like Emily. It was like Esfer at one point uh, later on. It was like, I called her Cordelia. At one point it was like either like Odile or Adette. She went through tons and tons of names, but right now it's Mo. Um, but this is this character. I drew one when I was 12. Then I did like a redraw when I was 14, 15-ish. And I think I went back and labeled this because this is like 15, 16-ish. And this is, I think, 17-year-old me drawing the same character and then going back and labeling everything. And it's so funny, that five-year, like very like soft features, wavy hair. And then even now to this day, I'll try to like put like a picture in editing of what Mo looks like now, much bulkier, harder. Like I remember like this character um, back when, you know, I was like calling her Emily or Esfer or whatever. She was like very petite in frame, but now Mo, same character is like complete opposite. Like, like Andre the Giant levels. And here we have Pokemon Gen 5. Oh my gosh. Deerling, Carablast, Fungus, the Goth, Gothita, Gothita, the, 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 you know, this very messed up Amalga. <laughs> it looks like it's screaming in pain. And on the other side is just some more Pokemon Oshawott. 
I love Oshawott. Oshawott was my first ever starter. My first ever. If we wanna if we wanna use their official terms, it'd be my first partner Pokemon. Um, but no, Oshawott was my first starter. I have a big I'm a big fan of Oshawott because of that. Got a Whimsicott, a Muna, Muna. This I think is a Pokemon. I think I was trying to draw like Ampharos from memory, and then I just quit. And this is, I think it was supposed to be like the starting of a figure. There's the head, a neck, and arms, but I just stopped. And you'll notice too, a lot of these pages, it's going to be teared. That's because I would like tear off a page um, so I could like curl it and fidget with it. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> I have ADHD, so that's fantastic. This is Tangled fan art, I think. I might have been, might have been 12 or even younger. But I, I'm, I think that's Rapunzel because she's got her frying pan. That's fascinating. Now this is, this is some pony art. So fun fact: at one point, Emily, you know that character Mo, whatever, she, I, I, she was in My Little Pony. Like this was hers in My Little Pony. She was a Pegasus, and you're gonna see her making a lot of crazy expressions because you know I was a kid in middle school and like early high school. It's like oh, having a character who's like, like. You know, like the meme of the guys like, I'm crazy. I'm insane. I'm crazy. I'm insane. Like, I thought that was the coolest thing. I thought that's what you were going to do. So here's the same character, but as a red wall, um, red wall by Brian Jakes. I, big thing I've always, not always, well, pretty much always. Um, loved, instead of being a warrior cats kid, I'm a red wall kid. So this was the same character, um, but as like, like a fox, I think I was going to make her, um, fascinating stuff. Fascinating. So there's her with the sword. We got a little Dwosian. That's what the first one's called. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not the, I try to be. Now here's some stuff, like I said, I just like draw on paper. Um, a lot of this stuff, I think I was drawing a lot of like scenes played out in my head. The thing is I have terrible handwriting. So a lot of this stuff I'm not even gonna be able to read. So we're just gonna have to look at these like chicken scratch doodles together. And if there's anything I can piece out, I'll tell you. Um, so what I need to tell you guys though, if you see a guy who kind of looks like this, this very specific cowlick pointy ears, um, that's Julius. If anyone's seen some of my previous stuff, I, I'll try to put a picture, um, on screen now. Yeah, same character. <laughs> um, just totally, like, like the Julius now, you know, he's much shorter in stature. You know, he's fat, uh, darker skin tone. The beta Julius, as I like to call him, he was a skinny white elf twink. Um, take with that what you will. Oh my God. <laughs> just, this is just crazy looking at all of this. Um, so at one point, like, I think the story kind of was, was that, see, this is a character. I think you're supposed to be thinking, I was thinking making this character girl, but her, like she was a boy. Her, like his name was Lionel, but I would call, just call him Nell or Nell. Like, yeah, like Nell. And eventually, I don't know how, this Lionel like, kind of morphed into Prunella, this other character I have, who I kind of mentioned in one of like my older videos. Um, and I think it was kind of like this weird love tri triangle thing with like Lionel, Emily in this iteration, and this other guy named Calvin. So I think the story was, is that Emily was like part human, part dragon. Calvin was part like fae or elf, part human. And then they have Julius and then like, so he's part human, part dragon, part elf or whatever. And, and like he has to, and then, and then beta Julius has to go back in time to like end his own existence or whatever. It's really stupid. Um, <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. I was it, was, it was pretty crazy. So there was, and it was like set in high school too. Like Julius was going back to like when like this, his parents' generation was like, but this is in high school. 
Uh, this is another character. I think his name was Orion. I don't know what his deal was. I think he was like part of the photography club. I don't know. That's weird. Here we have Pokemon fan art. It was specifically in and then the player character, aka Hilda. I, I, you know, Generation 5, Black and White was my first games. And I, I have a big love of those. But here's what uh, Lionel, very awkward looking. Gotta love... Even still, I, I struggled with it then. I struggle with it now. Gotta love just how terrible this, that clothing looks. Oh, God. Gotta make sure I keep this stuff in frame. <laughs> just some more stuff. See, I will always be... See, I... King of Pain by The the Police. It's a song I very much... I still kind of do, honestly. Associate with Julius. Very funny stuff. Nothing on that side. Here is... Okay... We got some wolves. That was another thing I kind of drew for a period of time, which was these really fucked up wolves. And, you know what? I'm just going to be, like, honest about it now because it does come up later. And, like, I try to be very nice to myself or my younger self because um, we all do, like, when we're growing up, especially as young artists, is very relatable feeling of making things, creating things, some of that stuff we're not the most knowledgeable on. And in my case, I specifically remember this iteration of, you know, Emily, whatever, uh, as she was called then, as for, she had, I decided to give her dissociative identity disorder because I thought, oh, that's so cool and edgy. You know, like a middle schooler, like 12 to 14 year old who watched like a few documentaries on YouTube. Like that's, I don't, I had no idea what I was talking about. And it was just really bad. It, it fell in a lot of like the tropes you see, you know, people, you know, with DID or other similar, you know, dissociative disorder. Would that be the right word? Um, have, it was just really like. You know, like the tropes, like, oh, there's one, there's one alter or whatever who, who is like a serial, like super edgy and I don't know, it was stupid. Um, but I think, I think the, the wolf was like, this like wolf thing was like associated with like one of these said alters. It's just like, uh, I'm doing it because I, one thing I wanted to do with this video was to... One thing, okay, see, here I am, unscripted here, be patient with me, is that when I was younger, I really struggled with liking my art and feeling like I was good enough. But one thing that made me feel a lot better was seeing all these artists that I looked up to that I thought were the bee's knees is when they showed off, show, would show off their older stuff, right? And I would see like, wow, it's not the best either. Like we all have to start from somewhere. So I want to show you all my terrible chicken scratch doodles. Um, so this character here, this very specific girl here. So for the longest time, she was actually a character, like when I was a child, uh, her name was Scarlet. And I was really obsessed with Beauty and the Beast, right? Like Disney's animated version. So I made this own version in my head where it was like Adam and Belle's like grandson and he had like the same curse that, you know, OG Beast did. And instead of, and it was like Scarlet was acting as like whatever the Belle. But the thing is, it was kind of a twist in dynamics was that Scarlet was just completely unfazed by like, cause you know, like in the whole entire movie and pretty much, you know, every adaptation of Beauty and the Beast, you know, you're scared of the beast. Cause he's beastly scary you know but the thing with scarlet is that she just be totally unfazed and then it was almost kind of like a comedy romantic comedy in that sense it's like why aren't you and then the plot twist would have been man i don't know what i was on when i was nine i, I kind of like it though um i actually kind of might revisit this in a later video coming back to this idea because it's an idea i've played with for a very long time um the plot twist was that Scarlet wasn't a human. She was actually a dragon and, and was using magic to look human. So to her, Beast was very normal. He was perfect as he was. 
and then it kind of flops at like it, it, like he you know this beast character turns into a human again and then Scarlet is now a dragon and it, it's kind of like an inverse you know like will he still love her as she is you know I guess it was kind of Shrek in that way too um very interesting but I, eventually I kind of phased out of Scarlet and then like I gave her older sister who would become Emily they also had a brother um, who was Scarlet's twin, and his name is Cardinal, because, you know, Cardinal's a shade of red. <laughs> this, okay, so I, I really wanted to, I was trying to get better at anatomy, right? And I was trying to follow the head rule, so I remember distinctly, like, going like, eh, 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 why doesn't it look right? I'm doing the head. But um, there was other pages to this. It was like a height chart of all these characters, and I've lost the other pages. But there's this partial character you can see here, and I, I didn't really do a lot with him, but his name was Ryu because he was dragon and he was Japanese. Very, very original, younger me. This was this character named Quinn and they they were evil, like an evil scientist, but it's like, oh, the evil, like you think they're an ally at first, but then they're like, ha ha, I'm evil. And, and Julius in this iteration was kind of like working for Quinn. And I'm, it, oh my God, I just can't get over how like, long he is it's so unnatural this is i don't remember where this manila vanilla paper whatever is from i do know there's some art in here it's like some weird creatures it's like a wolf fox thing this little cat girl's like chicks i kind of like the story it's telling here it's like a little red riding hood kind of thing we have a, like a lizard dog um and then we have like this emily you know, she's so quirky. She's so crazy. Oh, uh, I folded this wrong. Goodness gracious. We have to fold it right. La, 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 la. Okay, put that there. There's some more just doodlies. It's very, as you can see, I just really like drawing expressions a lot when I was younger. It's all I would draw was expressions and really bad I think I was trying more realistic. That ear perspective is quite something, ain't it? Quite something. I really do hope I'm like getting this like a good angle on film. This is an interesting page. You can see a lot of this pencil stuff is smudged. And this brings up another thing. Um, you know, 12, 13, 14, maybe even like 11. I'm probably a little bit of 15 too. So 11 to 15, we'll say, you know, I was really getting properly exposed to like anime or at least understanding what anime was and this was like early 2010s so <laughs> I think some of this was done with irony but I do remember this character here he's like an, another elf guy but his name is Bryn and he was supposed to be like the gay best friend <laughs> I'm laughing because it's uh oh uh, and that was like supposed to be what his eye was that, no I don't think that's supposed to be his eye I think that's just an eye study but he wore an eye patch and so this is him having a conversation with Lionel it's like and how are you and Emily related and and Lionel's like she's my senpai and Brynn was like well I'm her senpai very I'm like I said I want to be kind to my younger self man does this make me want to bang my head against a wall and then there's there's Emily there very interesting stuff and we turn over as you can see, like I said, this stuff is very smudged. It's like supposed to be like another drawing of like this Bren guy. We have some totodiles. I think I started, I was trying to do like my first ever, like I was too scared to do a Nuzlocke. So I gave myself, like I made like these really arbitrary rules to do my own challenge run where it's like, oh, you're playing, I'm playing Heart Gold, uh, which was a which was just a real hard time to track track down when I was a teen. By the way, I really wanted to get a copy of Heart Gold, and it was really hard to get a copy even back then. I had to like go to like multiple Game Stops. My dad went to one because it was like in his words a bad part of town, and he didn't want me to go. And he went to see if they had a copy, and they didn't have it. And it was like because I remember him calling. It's like what what is the game I'm looking for? And I had to describe it as like it's it's a dumb chicken, Dad. I look for the one that has a stupid chicken on it. It's very, but anyways, yeah, some Toto Dials, a Manfi. Manfi? That's the blue thing. Mareep. God, old person here. A, a rat. Rattata. 
got some, I guess, younger Emily's, a Hilda, nothing on that side. And, you know, this was supposed to be notes. This was a biology class because it was food chain, whatnot. And I didn't, I didn't take notes. I mean, I did, but I decided to, drawing was more important. So I think I was trying to draw like a chibi there. Um, just, you know, facial expressions head. I think this is supposed to be Emily and this Lionel character. We turn on the back. I am, I literally cannot read my own handwriting, especially from that period of time. Oh God, <laughs> but just more like expressions and stuff. This is, oh my gosh. I don't remember like writing, like this when this happened, I don't even remember writing this, but I, I've been looking through this stuff previously to kind of practice what I would say for this video. And this one always made me chuckle. Um, this is, <laughs> Okay, this is, I used to be in choir. I used to be a choir kid, right? So this is the choir teacher. She was telling us about this one song. It's like, okay guys, the only way we can pull this off is by caressing the in. Cause there was like a certain word that, you know, she wanted us to go lightly on the mm sound. So I took that and made like a, a kid named finger joke with in from Pokemon. <laughs> And then there's just, I think I was trying to learn how to draw a braid there and then just doodles. And this is what I was talking about with my very like insensitive portrayal of like mental illness specifically with, you know, dissociative identity disorder, or just, you know, systems in general. Um, it's like, oh, this, this all tree here is the one that's like random. It's like, do you like bananas? Very just, oh. So this, I did not order correctly. This should have been on top, but this is, okay, we're going back in time again. This is, I think from when I was 10, um, some girls, robot creatures. This is pretty interesting though. So it's two figures at a pond and they're fishing, right? There's one, it's like, oh, I got a hit. But if you flip it upside down, this other figure is like, oh my gosh, my something's on my line. So it's like, I think the idea was is that they, their hooking lines have like caught each other's and they both think they got a big, a big catch. So here we have just some more things. I think this was drawn, I used to do like, I'm not sure what other schools would have called it, but it, the one I went to was called Frontiers. Basically it was a daycare, but it was like an after school program, like daycare kind of thing. Um, you know, you pay the school something extra and then you like go after school and like stay and wait for your parents to pick you up. Um, so this was like from there, like I got done doing my homework one day and I just decided to draw. But what makes this page really special is that you flip it over. This is, this is a real funny, trust me. We have a dragon, not just any dragon. This is me trying to redraw the Aragon cover like the original one with was it Safira is her name because um I have an older sister and she was really into those books I think the movie had like come out or was you know I had an older brother who was like also got really into the books um I tried reading them I kind of read them I'm you know you know how it is like when when you're you read a lot as a child and then you stop reading as you get older <laughs> just some more like doodles um very strange creatures. This is a giant mouse thingy. This is a strange looking frog. Um, here's another case where I went back and drew something years down the line to kind of prove to myself like, oh, look how much better I got drawing. But um, I do kind of like these creatures, like <laughs> this weird rabbit thing, that's funny. Now this is, so you see a lot of loose leaf stuff and some stuff like that little Beatles notebook earlier like I knew how to draw in notebooks, but this is what I would consider to be my first ever sketchbook, or at least my first ever sketchbook with the knowledge of what a sketchbook is. And as you can see, this thing is battered. Like, look at that. Like I have to be, I'm gonna have to be really careful with this. Um, so bear with me here. And there's gonna be a lot of things I have covered with washi tape or like pieces of paper. That's why these pieces of paper are sticking out because it's like my legal name, it's names of former classmates, 
there's stuff that I'm just not comfortable having on video. Um, so hopefully that's okay. And yeah, so let's, let's open this thing. And as we can see, beautiful first page anime. Um, but yeah, this sketchbook was August 14, 2014, excuse me, August 2014 to probably sometime 2015. And what makes this really funny is that it's 2024, July, when I'm filming, filming this. This sketchbook is almost 10 years old. God, time flies. Um, so yeah, I, this would have been my first, I would have been a freshman in high school, 14 years old. Well, actually I started high school when I was 13, but that was only for one day. <laughs> Anyways, but no, I, I would have been like 14. Um, God. So I want to like focus on this really quick. There's this a really funny story with this one specific drawing, right? So I, I get this sketchbook for the first time. And this is like the first thing I draw on this page. And I draw this and I'm like, oh my God, this looks bad. Like, why did I draw this? And at this point, I don't think I colored it in. I think it was just like the black and white. And I think I went home and colored it in. But I'm sitting on the bus. I'm probably drawing some other stuff on the page. Um, and this kid gets up because it's his time to get dropped off or getting close to. And he was definitely like, I think a few years younger than me, but he it was, and this is important because it's actually really funny. I swear, I swear. And he, he sees this first page and he's like very cockily, I, like, I forget exactly what he said, but he's like, you know, very cocky, very bragging, like, oh my God, I could so draw better than that. Like, what is that? And I'm just thinking to myself, damn it, I know he's right. Because look at this. <laughs> like I said, I'm trying to be nice to my younger self, but what is this? What's up with their hair? Why the green tips? Oh, the ear. Oh God. Anyways. So this is, so yeah, I was trying to draw like a cool anime, anime cover. Um, so there's Julius and he's got like his thing around like a, like a watch cause he's like time traveling in, into the past to get rid of himself. Um, there's the evil scientist Quinn. There is Emily. This is, let me flip this over. I'm gonna have to be very careful. I'm gonna have to be doing that a lot. Here is, I don't know. That's like Julius, that's something. I think there's a character. I think what I ended up doing is that I decided to make some special force of like other like half fae, half dragon kids who have to like go back in time and like stop their own creation. It's really, I don't even know. Um, so yeah, here's some more like Emily, like I guess kind of like a little woofy. So there's this, this Calvin guy again. I don't really remember about a lot about Calvin. Um, I do know he was supposed to like be British and he was very, um, he's very white bread, very boring. Um, there's like a wolf thing. There's this thing of Emily. See, she was fairly petite, but she knew how to, she had a machete, she had a sword. So she could stab you. And, and even though she was really small and petite, she could, you know, just, just dumb stuff you think of when you're, when you're young. This is, I don't know who this is supposed to be. I think this is supposed to be like some teacher or something at this school, I don't know. And this is, when I, I was looking through this earlier, I, you know, making sure if there was anything I needed to cover up for the sake of privacy, um, just kind of thinking of what I would say is commentary before this video started. And like I said, my handwriting is shit. So I didn't know what on earth I was saying here, right? And when I realized, and I just remember like figuring out what was being read here and just literally going like, oh, come on, why did you have to put that in? And to see what I mean, I'll read it out here. Okay, so there's these two kids. This is Orion, and I don't know what her name was. Eventually, she would become a character named Ada. Uh, I've, I don't know what she was called at this point in time. So we'll just call her Ada for now, because that's all I have. Um, so it's like, See, now I read it one at one point, but now I can't even read it now. But basically it's something like they're like new students and it's lunchtime. They don't know where to sit. And Orion is like, well, there's only two tables left and there's one single person at each of these tables. So whatever table they're, they're sitting at, they have to pick a table to sit at. So there's narration. We have the one fourth Faye guy 
with sharing problems. And here's the thing. Why do we have to know he's mixed, younger me? Does that even matter? You could just said, oh, there's this guy with sharing problems. I don't even know why that had to be. Like, you, you didn't need that detail. Anyway, it's Calvin, and he's like, this lunch cost me $2. If you think I'm sharing, you're crazy. Lunch for $2 in this economy? Could you even imagine? Um, I think that's just an unrelated Emily Doodle. So then it cuts to more narration. Or the girl who has no social skills. And then it cuts, to, and then we see like Emily and she's like, oh, okay, how do skeletons communicate over long distances? And narration is again, like at all. They use a telephone, get it, it's a pun. And, and then Ada and Orion are like, oh yeah, we gotta sit by the Scrooge, uh, agreed. And then it cuts to them and they're like just sitting just awkwardly by the, by Calvin, very, very entertaining. This is, <laughs> this is in September because of the nine anime. It's just some like generic magical girl and a weird little chinchilla koala thing. Um, I have no idea what to say. I mean, I kind of like the star earrings. I kind of see what I guess I was going for with more like a flowy, I guess, kind of like Greco Roman inspired, but uh, I gotta be careful with this. Some more wolf dog thingies. And Emily. Oh man, this is just making me. I remember this page, I was drawing it while waiting in line for lunch and I was specific, specifically trying to draw things I wouldn't normally draw. So we have a turtle and we have this Caesar guy because I was trying to draw like a, a more like buff masculine figure because I don't really draw those. And then we have a Pikamina there. Pikamina, I am pie. Okay, this is more, like I said, just gonna be like a lot of doodles. I think this is supposed to be some evil guy who wasn't Calvin, who wasn't Lionel, who who was also like another love interest for Emily, but he wasn't really a love interest. He was some just some jerk who like wanted to hit on her, and it was just just a tool. Um, here we have some more doodles of Orion and this Ada character, little Marie. And this here is these pages were taken out, as you can see, they were kind of colored. This is because when I was in, uh, you know, a freshman. Uh, we had in our English class, we did a, you know, a section on the most dangerous game. We had to do a project for it. I think it was like towards the end of like a nine weeks. And, you know, we, it was like one of those things where it's like, oh, you could do a bunch of things, but it has to equate to like whatever many points. So one of the things we could do is we could make illustrations. And so I made illustrations uh, based on certain like things that happened in the book. And then I turned those in and the they're lost to time because whatever teacher still has it or has thrown them out. Um, she was a nice teacher though. I don't remember her last name, but she was cool. So we have just like some more doodles. I think there's that hypothetical teacher again at this school. Um, there's like a Bryn and an Emily. There's, see Lionel and Emily. I think at this point I started calling her Esfer because I thought, I don't know, it's like a Russian name. Oh, that's cool. But they were like childhood friends. Um, <laughs> Very fascinating stuff. I gotta just stop being sarcastic. Just random lady with curly hair. Like I said, there's not really anything, like this whole entire sketchbook is, is just what I would call chicken scratch of just like quickly drawn things. This is, this is, this is Jajinkas. This was a Whimsicott. No, Cottony, maybe? Maybe I was thinking more Whimsicott. I don't know, but it was one of the two Jajinka. That's a Pan Sage. We've got this woman here. I remember actually being really proud of this and like trying to show my classmates this. Like, this is so cool. I really like how it came out. Um, I kind of, I mean, you know, it's something. I think that's how my classmates reacted to when they saw it. They didn't really say anything. <laughs> Um, we'll get back to this, but now I just kind of want to focus. There's that Scarlet character I was mentioning. Um, some more doodles. And this is like, supposed to be like, I think this is the only thing we ever see of Cardinal. Because at this point, I pretty much was stopped thinking about like Scarlet and Cardinal. But I think it's supposed to be Cardinal yelling at Emily. But this is, this mas masterpiece. So, you know, I was 14, a lot of anime stuff I was getting introduced to the first time. I think this is supposed to be drawn as like a joke slash ironic. 
Um, but it still makes me want to bang my head against the wall. So this is the most dangerous game abridged, like abridged anime. So we have whatever the main character of the most dangerous game. And he's like, don't notice me, senpai. And then like the evil guy who wants to hunt him is like, but I already have. I don't know who this guy is. He's like, I should have stayed at Hogwarts. I, well, Hagrid, I don't even know. And I think this is supposed to be some classmate who's like, I told you that island was bad news. I don't know who that's supposed to be. And that's supposed to be me. And no, husband, no, I want you to live. So the context for that is my friend D, who actually has drawn some stuff in the sketchbook. We'll see later. I'll make sure to point it out. They, you know, they're also an artist. And at that point in time, they also did like for this project, um, same teacher, but different like class periods. They also did like the illustration, like assignment for this project. And they drew like, I, like a really good looking main character guy. And I think the design I drew here was based off like the art that I saw that D did. And so I was like, I don't know. You know, when you're an awkward teenager, it was just, I don't know, it's just so awkward, so awkward. But basically, I really liked this art that, that D drew. And the only way I could express my like, like, oh, wow, this looks really cool was like, oh, my God, you make him look like a like a husband out. It was so cringe. It was so cringe. Oh, I hate myself. No, no, I don't. I just embarrassed by my my youth. I think a lot of us are, though. I think some more just doodle stuff. There is... Animal. I kind of like this, this headshot here, even though that cross hatching is a bit scuffed. So this is really exciting. I have to make sure I put some context to add. So this is Marco, right? Gentle nature, strong will. It's like, what's so special about this, this Graggy? Well, that's because this is based off a real Pokemon I caught. Um, that star there. I was doing a, a, a replay of Pokemon Black. And I was grinding my Pokemon in the desert outside of Castelia to, you know, level up for like Berg. And I'm like doing other things, but then I look and I see that there's this Scraggy that's different colored. I'm like, wait, what? No, it couldn't be. And it was, I, it was a full odd shiny. And I was like freaking out. I was like so scared I wasn't going to be able to catch him, but I caught him in an ultra ball. And yeah, it was Marco. And I didn't use him like an idiot because I thought that, you know, if it was Pokemon, that even if they shared like a subtype, I couldn't use him because I my starter was a pig knight. It's like I can't use two fighting types, but I still saved him. Um, he's, I think, in Pokemon Bank right now. But I, I put him in Alola. He became an Alola champion. And I still have him. I still have Marco. He's awesome. <laughs> so we have some more like doodles of like Marco. There's like my little... This version of Hildo that I was playing as with the Tepic starter I chose. This is some more like doodles. There's like that, you know, Marco the Pig Knight that I, I don't even remember what I called the Pig Knight because I think it's supposed to be like a Nuzlocke or something because I was really obsessed with Nuzlocke, Nuzlocke comics as a kid. Maybe that's what that Jijinko was earlier that Whimsicott was like I caught a Cottony because it was black version. Um, but here's some more art. Pokemon, Emily, but there's Marco as a Jijinka. Because a lot of the Nuzlocke comics I would read when I was younger, they either focused on the characters being Pokemon Jijinkas, or at some point they would do like an extra piece. It's like, oh, here's all the Pokemon in this comic as like humanizations, you know, Jijinkas. Um, this is, I don't know who this is. This is just like a random person. This is, so also at the same time, I started to think a lot about like Heart Gold because it was the game before Black and I've never, I never really played it. But there's some more personal reasons too. I, I kind of always was fascinated with Heart Gold that I, I don't really want to get into because uh, it, it's a lot of personal uh, information. Um, but yeah, there's like, I guess my versions of like these trainers, like if I were to play Heart Gold, which I started to do, just started to do, I think it's like I, I have to do Totodile because Totodile is the one I like the most. I still like Totodile the most. I think. So it's like silver with meganium. So yeah, just like a bunch of doodles. I might just have to, this video is going to be super long. I think it's already like over 40 minutes. So I might just have to like start 
skipping through. At first, I thought these characters were naked, but I think it's supposed to be like Bryn hugging, but like I didn't know how to draw a clothing fold. So it just looks like they're, I just drew the, uh, the figures. Anyways, yeah, I think that's supposed to be another Scarlet. Um, oh, Emily, she's so edgy. Look at her, scary. Um, yeah, I think I just might have to start skipping through pages rather quickly because none of this stuff is very interesting. Um, there's like this, I say this, but here I am. I think it's like some more Pokemon stuff. I think like all these various, because that's supposed to be um, the old, the Emerald player character. Brendan, um, and they're like just talking about like their evil teams and stuff, and there's Silver being a little poo poo head. There's Hilda, because you know, we don't know where Hilda or Hilbert went in Black 2 or White 2. What if they died? It's like, oh, where did Hilda, you know, just kind of very dramatic. Um, my thoughts are becoming so discombobulated. So, yeah, let me turn this over carefully. So, one thing I did, like, is that I decided to write passwords, right? Um, none of these passwords are really, like, work anymore, but it still makes me nervous as hell that, like, what if somebody sees the passwords that I wrote from that period of time and somehow still, like, hacks into, like, old accounts I had, even though I know none of these passwords are still in use, if that makes sense. I'm just, oh, I'm just a little, I'm just a little worried. So this, I can tell... This right here, let me get some more tape on that, is supposed to be Sharon and Bianca, some other guy in the background. It's like they're having photos as a friends and then there's like a pig night there. This is like so awkward. Drink how many times for, that I say that, take a shot. Uh, so yeah, this is just more like doodles and stuff. I think I was going through something here, considering how scratchy that is. It's feeling very emotional. <laughs> At this point, I'm not even considering, I don't know, like I'm so scared to keep flipping this around. I don't want to mess with how like already fragile this thing is. Just like various doodles. This is that Ryu character I mentioned before. So it's Calvin, he's riding a bike. So there's this other girl. Um, she's also was in like the photography, this journalism class. There's Orion, there's Julius, there's Quinn, there's this Ryu. There's, you know, Ada, they're like, they're all, it's like an like funny little anime drawing. Like he's low, he's, he's dry, he's, he's on the bike, but they're all mooching off of him. Um, this is drawn. So I used to be part of the American Daylily Society um, and we'd go to these meetings and it'd take us like, <laughs> we'd have to try like almost two hours to go to these meetings. And this is stuff I would draw there while in those meetings because I was really bored at the time because I was like the only, the youngest person there. Literally everyone else was like 40. Well, my sister would show up. So she'd be like the next oldest so she'd be like in her early 20s I'd be a teenager and then everybody else would be like 40 and up so I was really bored so I just used my sketchbook to draw but that's like a day lily I think that's supposed to be me and my sister it's like where's some food because like we'd go there to like eat the that's the thing you know you go and there'd be food this is just various art I think this is supposed to be kind of like collab between me and my sister because that's definitely her handwriting um I think she kind of drew the figure and then I kind of went back and like, or maybe I drew some stuff and then she drew some stuff on the figure. I don't know. This is some more stuff. This is like, Emily's going like, what made you think you can touch me? Answer me! Very, that, that is supposed to be her mom. And one thing I remember is that her mom was just not a good person. And that's why, why she was the way she was, uh, is that her mom was, uh, not a good person. I think she was supposed to be rather abusive. Just at the very least very negligent. I don't know. We got some ponies. Um, more doodles. You can see I was probably supposed to be in an algebra class or math class. I just did not care. It's like I don't care. I just want to. I just want to do art. I just want to draw. 
some more of that. Because I know her name was not Ada at this point. It was something else, but I don't remember. But some more of that character. I'm sorry if I stop, stop wanting to flip things. I just don't want to... Uh, I just don't want to mess up the sketchbook. But we'll do so anyways. This is supposed to be like a little character bio. Yeah, her name was like Emily Drake. Because so I think Drake is like dragon in like Welsh, I believe. Welsh language. Um... Because I, I went to like this Celtic festival, um, is what the event was called, but they had like this one booth where all these flags were displayed and there was one with a dragon on it. I've never seen anything like it. So I like asked the guy running what it was about and then he like told me about like, oh yeah, this is the Welsh flag and like, you know, in Wales, you know, and he wasn't from, he was, I don't, I can't remember, really, really remember his accent now, but I definitely know he was somewhere from either you know, Wales, England, Scotland, Ireland, you know, somewhere in that area. Um, what are those accents? But just hearing this from like some guy, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm like a teenager. That's so cool. So for the longest time, I no longer have it, but for the longest time, I had the Welsh flag <laughs> pinned up in my room. Because <laughs> uh, I just thought the, the, the Welsh flag was really cool. And it is pretty cool, but I just feel like that's so cringy. Like, it's bad enough you had to be a cringy anime fan, but you had to be, like, like a weirdo about whales. I don't know. It's like, Emily's wearing a dress, and Elle's like, Oh my god, she's so cute! Ah! This is literally making me, like, want to jump off a bridge! No, no, I don't. This is Nell and Emily, very anime. Oh. This is, like various Pokemon. I think the idea was is that I was like drawing like some of my classmates as Pokemon. So I was supposed to be an Autono. I do know now that I'm, I would be a Munchlax actually, <laughs> but at the time I thought I'd be an Autono. This is my friend D. D, I decided that time would be a shiny Braxton because I thought the that shade of purple really fit them. Um, but yeah, just some other just Pokemon doodles. This is, if you recognize this character, you or your loved ones recognize this character, you might be entitled to financial compensation. That's all I'm gonna say. If you know, you know. If you know, you know. Just some other Emily doodles. Um, <laughs> some more edgy, edgy Emily. Woo! More edgy Emily with like a wolf pelt and like wolves, cause that's, that's cool and scary. This is, okay, yeah, Homestuck. There was a period of time where I tried to get into Homestuck, but the thing is I'm really bad at reading because of my attention span, and the way Homestuck is formatted didn't, really did not help. Um, and eventually I just kind of realized that I just, uh, I don't care about Homestuck. <sighs> that was a bad joke. Anyways, it's like Car Cat. Is it Dave? Dave is that one, right, with the glasses. But I remember being really proud of this car cap for the longest time. Just because, like, oh, wow. The inking on this is so cool to have, like, part of his hair, like, like be a solid black. But if you look, the inking isn't even that, like, good. Like, if you actually look at it, it's still kind of, like, oh, making the camera shake, like, unbalanced or whatever. I think this is supposed to be, like, the characters dressing up for Halloween. But I don't think... I think this is supposed to be... Yeah, werewolf, like some of the character, I don't know, it was like Halloween doodles, because I think Halloween was coming up. Oh, shoot. I'm going to have to edit this bit out, but excuse me, I'll be back really quick. I just remembered something. Future me, edit this. Well, I couldn't find the thing, so maybe I can go back and find it later and edit in, like, footage or pictures of it. But I, like, drew this art of, like, because Lionel was part dragon, too, I remember. Um, but there was this whole entire thing that even though Emily was part dragon, like, she couldn't, like, access, like, her, her draconic heritage. Um, but it was, like, they were, like, it was supposed to be ideas, like, you cut it out, and it looks like they're hanging from something. So you could place it from anywhere, and it looks like they're hanging off of something. And Emily was, like, hanging off of Lionel's tail. And I drew this, like, on Halloween. Um, and it was, the paper was from the sketchbook, though. Um... Yeah, some stuff like, I know I'm supposed, wait a minute, is that a, 
I should have not have been drawing that. I am turning the page. Oh, no, I am not. No. No. Anyways, Vocaloid fan art. We got See You. I really like See You. I think I never, I didn't really list a lot of the songs using her, but I liked her design. We got a Rin, got a Miku, we got a Gumi. We've got OC's like dressed up as Halloween. Emily's supposed to be like a werewolf. Calvin is wearing a shirt that says costume. I forget what her name was. I don't even know who that's supposed to be. The, the, the bitch from Homestuck, the clown fucker. What is he doing here? Apparently one of my characters was thinking the same thing because she was making a comment on it, but I cannot read the text. Um, some more just doodles. I don't know why she's yelling at her. This is just bizarre. At this point, the sketchbook is just getting bizarre. This is, oh, look, there's some art that Dee drew. And, you know, they didn't like it, so they kind of scratched it out. But I was like, how could you? This art is amazing. But, um, Dee, if you're watching this, I'm so sorry. <laughs> you have to be associated with these monstrosities in which I have created. Um, oh, God. I keep saying it, but the facts don't change. This sketchbook is scary. It's like supposed to be like a driver's license. I don't even know. Yeah, I gotta be careful with this cover. Oh God, oh God, okay. Operation. Whew. Like a dress, like a prom dress. Some of this stuff I'm not even like, cause it's it just, it's nothing. It's nothing, it's giving nothing. So yeah, this is the paper that little cutout would, it was from. And like they're kissing there. I think that's supposed to be them. I was trying to practice drawing kissing. I don't know. Some more stuff. Lionel. See, at one point I stopped shipping Calvin and Emily and started shipping, I do remember, you can't tell because this is all just pencil sketches, but this girl with like a headband and slicked back hair, she was blonde and you know, she was also in like this photography journalism club. And I started shipping her with Calvin instead. Um, I don't know, I straight up don't know. It's a Lionel guy. This is pretty funny. So for the longest time, you know, the story that I've had in my head you know, starting in high school, I called it Puppet. Because the whole entire thing was that, like, you know, Julius, he was this, like, anti-hero kind of figure. Um, and he was kind of puppeteered. And, and people were just kind of, like, being like, oh, you thought you were in control, but you were just being puppeted. So that's why it was called Puppet. And Puppet eventually kind of morphed into uh, Thunder Puppet, <laughs> which is... Which sounds really stupid, um, and it is a stupid name, but, it, it, but you know, Thunder Puppet being kind of the current story that Julius is in, I, I just always associated him with the word puppet because of that. But here's like the main cast of this early iteration of Puppet as redrawn as the Ramones. So the story is, I went to a record shop with my family and they had this Ramones poster and I really liked the art for it, so I like replicated it, but drew my characters instead. And I tried to do the same thing with another poster from this record shop with Emily and Nell, but I did not like it. But looking back, it's honestly, all things considering, could be a lot worse. Like, I'm really proud of how this record player, or at least the specific part, the disc, eh, not so much, like the cross etching, eh. But I'm proud that I tried. <laughs> We have, I think, I think that's supposed to be Emily when she was younger. I don't know. Um, oh, so silly. So silly. I'm trying to be kind to myself, but. Oh, God, not this page. So this was 2014, like I said. And you know what came out in 2014? Goddamn Attack on Titan. So this is supposed to be Levy and for some reason I put him in the fucking kill a kill outfit <laughs> and there's the bitch with eyebrows it's like Levy what is this shit it's like 
fuck your eyebrows. Oh, hell no. Very creative. Of course, I just, oh, so 2014. So 2014. Um, I think that's the only Attack on Titan fan art I've ever drawn. And thankfully, that's all of it. Um, I think that's supposed to be Nell playing Twister, Lionel playing Twister, some more doodles. Um, happy Halloween! It's supposed to be, let's see. I don't even know what this says. Probably some really stupid, edgy stuff. That's that's her mom, Hannah, is what I called her. She was just not a good... Basically, she was Lusamine before Lusamine existed, is how I describe her. But not like Ultra Sun and Moon Lusamine. This is like OG Sun and Moon Lusamine, where she was just a terrible person. Um, I like this little drawing of Julius, though, reaching out. That's cute. This is, okay, I remember drawing this page in the thought process. So we have talked about Julius, this iteration of him, being from the future and having to go back in time. So in this timeline, his parents were like Calvin and Emily, right? And he has this memory of them as a kid going to this game store. Well, in the past now, he's at the same game store and he's getting really emotional because it's like, I have to go and destroy my existence and my parents. And then, you know, the, the King of Pain by the police is playing, because of course it is. Um, so I mentioned wanting to make like a group, because I think just like anime, like show in, like, you know, a lot of show ins, they have like a group of characters with a goal. So like, I wanted to like make a group of these like half dragon, half fey, half human kids, you know, who are part of this um, group that Julius is in and they all have to go back in time. So these were like these two ideas for like this said group. I didn't do much of it though. Um, I think at some point I'd like start to think about like the Odyssey because we were talking about the Odyssey. So I think it's supposed to be Circe is what this character was called. Um, so I, I think this guy was supposed to be like Odysseus or something and he hated Circe. I don't even know. I don't even know. Um, I don't even know. <laughs> oh, goodness me. Thankfully, we're getting closer and closer to the end of this nightmare. I I think this was another bad day for me. Just because, like, I know when I was younger, if I drew like this, I was not having a good time. Um, little, like, them interacting, like a prom or something, probably. Um... Because I didn't mention this, Nell and Emily were, were also like royalty because and, and the school they went to was like a private school because I thought private schools were the coolest when I was younger. Um, I come to realize that's not true at all. Yeah, I remember this is me planning out what this private school's colors would be. Because um, like the school they went to was called like Phoenix Mix. It's like supposed to be a, like a very like butchered Phoenix. Phoenix. Phoenix, but it was like blues, I remember. Like, I think at one point, yeah, there's me planning out their school emblem or something. There's this, the, the headband girl, Lionel. Oh. Gotta be careful of this cover. Wait, did I go back a page instead? I think I went back a page, yeah because of this going up and down all around. Okay, yeah, so that's the school or whatever. This is what the, I was trying to like make their, their school emblem to be. It was like Phoenix Academy of Higher Learning. It was like a blue phoenix. Did I not record? Because I just know I got a low battery notification. If I don't know what I did or did not record. Um, well, sheesh. And now that's low power, that means I probably have to skip through this thing. Um, anyways, yeah, this is supposed to be like, they went to some private school and it was like a, a phoenix was their mascot. It's, oh, I'm like trying to speed run through this. So it, let's, let's just go. We're, we'll just look at these chicken scratch doodles together and not worry about it. This is like, like, 
Yo, we gotta go to the academy, Emily. And she's like, Bwah. Um, she was like having a mental breakdown, and Lionel was comforting her. This is this Orion kid, and for some reason, his last name is Zaxby. And I think younger, I thought it was like, oh, it's like the Great Gatsby. It sounds so cool. Uh, and now I'm like, that's just the chicken restaurant. That's just the chicken restaurant. This this boy is is heir to the Zaxby's restaurant. <laughs> And this is the Coldplay song in my place? Oh my God. Um, I think at this point it's pretty much nothing. Uh, I don't, I, it's anime, so you know, I gotta draw, gotta draw them in the, the beat, the shower, haha, <laughs> shower gag. I think at this point it's like pretty much nothing. <laughs> Oh God. I think this is the last thing I'm gonna share because there's literally nothing else. I think at this point really worth a note except for this like anime girl. I think it's supposed to be like a fur collar around her neck. I don't know, God. <laughs> yeah, that's that's it. That is all of that. Um, I guess I'll have to get to this. I actually have a whole bunch of other like old sketchbooks I got out of storage. So if you wanna see the rest of this and some other stuff, uh, I guess we'll just maybe at a later date, who knows? Um, this video was a nightmare. At least it was for me. <laughs> I hope you liked it. Uh, till next time. S skadoosh.